Welcome to New Life Live with host and founder of New Life Ministries, Stephen Arterburn. For 35 years, New Life has been transforming lives one at a time thanks to the giving hearts of you, our listeners. Our goal is to provide you with wisdom from God's Word to give you hope and help in life's hardest places. If you have a question you'd like to ask today, our phone lines are open. Call 1-800-229-3000. That number again is 1-800-229-3000. Now here's Steve. Hi there. Welcome to New Life Live. Glad you're here. And I know that uh, Dr. Jill Hubbard is with me. And I think Becky Brown is on. Becky, are you there? If not, yes, you I will am. be. Oh, there she is. I okay, good. Becky. I am here. Hi, Jill. Hi, <laughs> Hi Steve. Becky. Becky is our... I'm in uh, Texas. Oh, you're just oh, all wonderful. over the place. Yeah, you are. She does travel a lot. <laughs> yes. And she, you know, if, if you haven't heard, she is our newly elected uh, president of New Life. Yay. And everybody has just responded amazingly. I mean, we've never announced somebody in a new position where people wept. They were so happy. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing. But you deserve that. Anyway, and... Thanks. You know, I, I've uh, mentioned this several times to folks, but I'm going to be taking a sabbatical. I've never done that in my 35 years here at New Life, and um, I suggested that I would do that to the board, and no one said it's a really bad idea. <laughs> so I don't know if that's because they'd like me to go on sabbatical uh, and get out of their hair, or be- maybe Becky asked them put me on sabbatical. But <laughs> no, it's, anyway. it's well deserved, Steve. You've been leading yeah. us for so yeah. long, and uh, we just want you to have some time to refresh. And we look forward to when you come back and tell us all the stories, because you will have them. Yes. <laughs> People have said, what are you going to do? And I've said, I'm not going to write, because that's kind of like work, too. Mm-hmm. I'm going to play the ukulele, the guitar, take piano lessons. I'm going to just do fun things and a lot of painting, hopefully. So we'll mm. see what that does for the brain. And uh, you you might want to listen to the rest of the program just to detect whether or not my brain needs this kind of rest and uh, because it does. Now, let me mention this. January has been dis- dubbed Divorce Month. There are a lot of very unhappy couples, and uh, they just don't want to think about getting divorced during the holidays. But after they're over, they say, let's go for it. Well, don't do that. Uh, invest... <laughs> Uh, in something other than a lawyer, use that money for Intimacy and Marriage Weekend because we have story after story of people that were set to divorce. They hated each other, and they are so, so glad that they didn't. And we're going to be doing the Intimacy and Marriage February 16th in Orange County. And, um, you know, I can think of a really great success story, but either of you have one that you recall from Intimacy and Marriage? Oh, yeah. I mean, I have people that were separated, um, brink of divorce, wife had had it, and I'm like, just just go, just go and try this. And they actually did three of our workshops, but Intimacy and Marriage, they moved back in together. They And I see them at church and they say, you saved my marriage. There you mm, go. I so, love that. that. You know, because it's it's practical too, mm-hmm. right, Jill? It's not only the emotional yeah. part, but we teach couples how to have those in-depth conversations. We teach them to understand what the real issue is because your histories are colliding when you mm-hmm. get married. Yeah. And a lot of times we just think it's about who didn't take out the trash and it builds yeah. on that. But we no. offer real, real help. And we do. we're so excited for people to come and make a difference in their marriage. 1-800-NEW-LIFE to find out about intimacy in marriage. It is the weekend of uh, right after Valentine's Day. Becky and I, uh, well, she facilitated. I co-facilitated or detracted one or the other. And (laughs) there were couples in their group that I just thought it was literally hopeless at the beginning. (laughs) And they they had such dramatic transformations. I mean, it was Mm -hmm. so great to see up close and personal. It really does produce something that you'll, I don't think you can experience mm-hmm. it from anything else. It's not your typical workshop. It's it's amazing. Call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. If you want to be on the program now, 1-800-229-3000. We'll take a break. Come right back for more of New Life Life. Glad you're with us. 
our marriage was just so toxic and just so many simple interactions that turned into conflict. And so we signed up to participate in the workshop. This is Steve Artery. Our Intimacy in Marriage workshop examines the various types of intimacy, spiritual, emotional, and physical, as well as the challenges of experiencing true intimacy. The tools that we received from the Intimacy in Marriage workshop were tremendous. It was so much that we were able to take and utilize and actually come back and apply. Don't settle for a miserable marriage or even one that's just okay. It's possible to have that great marriage you always want. The next Intimacy in Marriage Intensive is February 16th to the 18th in Orange County, California. Call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE to find out more or go to newlife.com. 1-800-639-5433. Best decision we could have ever made. There's no price that we can put on having healthy marriages. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. We are back. Before we talk with Karen from Boston, Massachusetts, I do want to mention that we've had uh, the Lose It For Life program for years. It's how I kept 60 pounds off and still have it off, fortunately. And uh, thousands of people have been helped by this, and we do have the early bird pricing. The The date is January the 27th, online. Don't miss it. If you want some great tips and hints on how to lose weight and keep it off, lose it for life. We do it one time a year. It's January the 27th. And we really deal with the why, the big old why. Why doesn't it come off, and why doesn't it stay off, and how did it get there in the first place? That's important. Well, let's go to Karen, Boston, Massachusetts, W-E-Z-E. Karen, welcome to New Life Live. Glad you've joined us today. And how could we help? Thank you. Um, So I guess the background is, um, the question is my son-in-law and my daughter, I guess, she, she diverts to him on everything. She thinks that's the Christian way. The man is the head of the household and, um, but so I've been with my current husband and married um, for 23 years. Prior to that, I was married to um, my th- three children's father for 20 years, who was gay and um, is now married to his partner, Steve. Um, okay. So, you know, with any divorce, there was bumps and bruises and things like that. But, you know, everybody got over it, and the kids um, were teenagers, um, one was in college and one was a junior in high school, one was a senior when we parted ways, and they wanted me to be happy, and I never really introduced them to anybody. Long story short, I ended up not ever wanting to get married again, but Roger has been a steady, consistent, sweet person that, you know, I'm married so, to, and we have so a what's the problem? relationship. What's the problem? So the problem, so we, so we always, you know, in the beginning we split holidays and stuff like that. Um, but then he started joining in once grandchildren started coming eight years ago. Can I come over to, I want to see the babies. My daughters had a baby a day apart in 2016. Of course, my door has always been open. Anybody can come. Um, you know, I mean, it just come in peace, you know. Okay, and, so um, what, what, has, what happened that's a problem here? So, so, so he's been coming and coming for seven and a half years. There'll be eight in April. And then this um past june so six or seven months ago um they were at our house for um i don't know something i forget what it was and um i think uh i don't know it was a get together for some reason anyway um my husband said something to my oldest daughter my oldest daughter and i kind of uh fuck a little bit but i mean we have a good relationship i'm with her kids all the time blah 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 Um, said something like, knock it off. You know, you're treating your mother with disrespect. That's that's rude. Stop it. You know, and she's like, I'm not. And she started arguing back a little bit. And he's like, you're being evil. Stop it. Or, you know, whatever the word was. He says it wasn't that. But my ex-husband said, I'm never going to be there again. He's a terrible, awful person. And God told me to walk away and never come back. You know, like stupid stuff. He comes from, a, my ex comes from a very dysfunctional family with drug addiction, suicide, um, mental health issues. One person didn't talk to the other. 
for years. He didn't talk okay. to our son for two years. So, okay, so, so how how do you think we him. how do you think we might be able to help you here? So this New Year's Day, we've always celebrated New Year's with all the kids, and he's always been welcome. But since that day in June when that happened at our house, he's been distant and won't come near our house, and says my ex, my now husband is evil and terrible, and he will not be a part of that, which is untrue. And um, I mean, he's been a dedicated father, stepfather, and blah blah blah. Okay. Okay. So now, New Year's Day, we were planning to get together, as we always do, and he said, I don't want anything to do with them. You know how I feel about that. To my youngest daughter and her husband, I just want to come there, New Year's Eve. I want to have a celebration and, and be around the kids and your family and anybody else who wants to be there except for them, and then New Year's Day celebrate the new year together. Okay. So and what what so, is the problem, though? I need you to tell us the well, problem had, you want us to help with. Right. What is that been, problem? We had been planning to get. We had been planning all to get together at our house like we always have for New Year's Day, and so I said, um, "Oh, so we're not coming here. We're going to your house to my son-in-law and my daughter." And they said, "Well, you're not coming. You're not invited. He doesn't want you guys there." And okay. We okay. Have so. Been, so like, what is the question then for so us? I said, I, well, how do I react to that? So I said, what do you mean? You know, I thought you guys weren't going to be a part of that when he started this last June separation. You know, like all of this um, fractured stuff isn't of God. You guys uh-huh. know that. You go to church. I mean, blah, blah, blah. What, what do so, you mean? We're not so, invited? So, Karen, the, so what you're saying is And the is door was ex- just slammed in our face. Yeah, Karen, the door what was you're saying is, and it says he doesn't want you there. He deserves some time without you and, and Roger there, and that's the end of it. Karen and never, Becky, your yeah. mic isn't yeah. quite yeah. on, and so yeah. I'm Karen, gonna have you fix that, and then Jill can. We're, yeah, I think Becky and I are both trying to maybe summarize here that your ex-husband and partner join in on holidays with you and new husband and all the kids, right? But because. Correct. Of your ex-husband's reaction to new husband, now there's this division. No, reaction, reaction to a comment that he made to my daughter being disrespectful okay, to me right. at our home. Right, right. Okay, yeah. so now daughter is joining years, joining with her dad. It's a different daughter. Okay. The, the daughter he made the uh, remark to is absolutely, you know, not doesn't even affect her at all. Okay. She's like everybody says and does things they don't mean. Okay. The new daughter's husband. Most okay, so she goes along with whatever the husband says. I mean, so the young daughter's we, husband. Okay, so we want to help you here. It's a little complicated, but it sounds like that since your husband said this thing, that there's been this big split, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. To my and so daughter. is is the question? How do we help you or? What is the best thing you could do well, to resolve that split or or heal that split? Would that be helpful to you? Well, yes, but the the, the big thing is my son-in-law, who I've, we have been there for buying a house, helping him with everything, uh-huh. monetarily, yeah. time-wise, never okay. asking for one thing in return, but a little respect has slammed the door on us on New Year's right. Eve and okay. day with all so, of the rest of the family. So let's hear from Becky and Jill about what they think might be most helpful. Well, Becky, Karen, you want to get first, us? Okay. Yeah. So sorry about my mic before, but Karen, here's the thing. You've been hurt mm-hmm. and it's overwhelming you because it's you, you guys have had this family connection for years and now all of a sudden one thing happens and all the dominoes are falling. The, I think that Correct. you're going to have to manage this with, okay, you're going to have to work with just your son-in-law and your daughter in reconnecting, recognizing that what was once all together happy and all that is no longer. But how to resolve that is to recognize uh, your feelings with him. I'm just curious, since they slammed I, the door in your face, did. what you did do that. Okay, and then what was the result of that? Oh, sorry you feel like that. That's just the way it is. It's not about you all the time. It's not about um, we can have anybody here we want without including you. It was just such a disrespectful Mm -hmm. demeanor from my Mm -hmm. son-in-law. My daughter just didn't say a word because she defers to him all the time like he's the man of the house. 
he's a Christian. They go to church. They actually asked him to be a leader, you know, like um, in his okay. church at one point. You know what I mean? So, so and, Karen, and I, I, I agree. This is very, very hurtful. And you've had an unusual situation right. to begin with. I mean, it's highly unusual that you have the ex and their new partner and all of you together. So that's been a good thing. Oh, there were hugs and Easter breads and, and Yeah, I know. And, and so it feels like so much loss with your son in law's reaction. I think sometimes there's so many players involved it can come across very confusing and we're even trying to sort out all of this. I sometimes it's best to go to the people directly and I know you've tried, but but your husband maybe meeting with your son in law. And and looking he did. okay, he did do that. But looking at what else, he because did. this reaction seems like an overreaction. So there must be other things built up here. You've been very helpful to him, but I wonder if in some ways he's felt a little emasculated, right? Even though he's needed the help, and uh, you, so there's a reason why he's feeling the need to like assert himself now. And so I think a little more curiosity. Um, asking him how you may have hurt him in other ways, um, and and that you're you know we one, did okay well we did okay and all he kept saying is um, um, no no hurt in other ways we appreciate everything you've done with the kids and babysitting and helping out and blah 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 you know it's our house we can have anybody we want sure they can but it's confusing you. that all of a sudden there's been a shift. And that's what you're trying to explore. And then I wonder and about I your. He goes, I wonder about yes. your current husband even meeting, and maybe the two of you meet with your ex husband <laughs> and his partner and say, you know, we've had this unusually great situation, and now it's all unraveling, and, and we, we need we some also help here. Out, we also reached out via text because I didn't think a phone call would give a good result that they could think about it. I'm talking and, about in person. Uh, what if yeah, you met so, well, in person? They live in, a, they live in a different state, so okay. it's hard to always meet but in you person. Guys... I mean, they're an, over an hour away. Okay. But we reached out in text and said, can we talk? And there was no response. And he told my older daughter, tell them to leave us alone. We don't want mm. anything to do with them. Wow. Wow. Very hurtful. Very. So I, I do think... I mean, I think that... that... I think that I well, expected something like that from him because he's always been up and down in his whole dysfunctional family. But my I'm going to ask you to think about him. something. I'm going to ask you to think about something. Yeah. Sure. Jill brought up the issue that there are probably other things. Mm -hmm. And so why don't you take a minute and think about what other thing added to this? Could have led to with this. With my son-in-law, exactly. With all of the people, and yeah. with with your your ex, with the son-in-law, no, your I daughter. But here's the thing. Wait, Karen, I know you're trying yeah. to get a lot out and and tell us things in this phone call. But even in this phone call, yes, I, I'm feeling a little bit of a resistant to to listening and taking things in. And I think with the people around. Instead of putting out your interpretation of things, I think we need to often be curious and hear how other people see things. It doesn't, you don't have to believe it's right, but it's still their perspective. And unless you can hear how they're viewing things, oh, you're have, not going to get to what's really going on. I absolutely agree. And I did ask Anna and Pete, the son in law and my da youngest daughter, what is going on here? Right. I I don't understand why that kind of reaction. Right. Help me understand it. what it's like to be on the receiving end of me in this relationship that you feel the need to push me away. I really want to grow here. Right. Right. Becky, do you, do you have a thought say, or two here uh, for her? Yeah, I'm thinking, because, well, yeah. I'm thinking, Karen, my, my one question is, have you had outside help? whether it's a counselor, a oh. pastor, somebody, you have not? Yeah, we go to a group. We go to a small group. We've been part of a church. Okay, we wait, okay, group. listen. We vacation. Listen, I'm, I'm for you. I'm for you. Yeah, we're I'm for just you. trying to understand it. Okay, I'm talking about clinical help 
Because here's what I said earlier, there's grief that comes into this shock of being rejected like yeah. you have from the son-in-law. Right. And it uncovers a lot of pain that may not even be related to this. And it just is so confusing. And I think that that will be a great next step. You have done everything that you can by reaching out to all of them. And essentially they've shut the door over and over and it's heartbreaking. And if you sit with a counselor or a coach, they can help you get some way forward so that this doesn't go on for another six months, that you can get some clarity and some understanding. That's what I would suggest. Yeah. All oh, right. Well, I'm I really... talk to someone, but they don't, they don't want okay. to discuss it any further. Well, hold on. We've got to go to a break here. You're listening to New Life Live, 1-800-229-3000, if you want to join us here. Also you need some help, 1-800-NEW-LIFE. We'll be back after this. When you give to the New Life Scholarship Fund, you're giving someone hope for a brighter future. I was kind of in the closet and, and hit with my struggle. Your donation really made the difference, especially in my situation, because I wound up getting laid off of my job. At the New Life Intensives, hurting people are able to begin a new path towards healing and freedom that has an effect on all of those around them. I think the people who support New Life financially are people that I'll never know. You know, I'll never be able to thank them personally for the gift that they gave to us. Their giving saved me my husband and our family from being torn apart. To help hurting people to connect to the help they need, make your gift to the scholarship fund at newlife.com or by calling 1-800-NEW-LIFE and specifying scholarships. Someone called and sponsored me to come this weekend. Whoever that is, just know that you saved a life. Literally, you saved my life. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Dr. Heidi Summers on coaching. A lot of people don't understand the difference between counseling and coaching. Coaches can help you with strategizing. Not everyone is in a crisis or recovering from a trauma. A lot of people just need help getting to where they want to be and they don't know how to do that. And so it's helpful to have a third party come in to give objective feedback, set goals, create accountability, and help you walk out what your goals are actually are. If you need a coach for life, your career, relationships, your health and fitness, leadership, and more, call New Life today and ask about the New Life Coaching Network. Our coaches have been trained and screened with the same intensive process we use for our network counselors. Coaches are intended to help you live in the present and goal set toward what it is you want for the future. Take control of your life and take action to achieve your goals. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE and talk to us about getting a New Life Coach today. We'd love to hear from you. If you have a question or a comment, call toll-free 1-800-229-3000. Now back to New Life Live. We're back and uh, we're talking with Karen here and, and Becky has some things just to finish up with Karen. Well, Karen, you said at the very end, um, hold on, there's a little kickback here on the mic. Um, one of the things that you said was that the family um, or the person that you talked to didn't want to talk about it anymore. When I was talking hold, about Hold on just a second, Becky. Fix, you fix the mic. I'll have Jill make a comment, and then we'll come right, right back to Right. You. And so, Karen, if someone, uh, first of all, that doesn't sound like a clinical person who would say that. But if yeah. someone is saying that to you, that's an invitation for you to look at you. Why are people shutting you down? Yeah. What is right. going on? And you've tried all these wonderful things, and you've told us all the things that you've done. They're all great. But when those things aren't working, instead of defending them, you need to look at, hmm, they're not working. Maybe I need to take it a step back and take it to a whole nother level. Yeah. And I think there needs to be some reflection and paradigm shifts here for you to be able to re-engage with your family in a different way. So all you can do is work on you. So even if they're more of the problem, you got to work on you and you have to be open at looking at the fact that you may not be doing it as well as you feel like you are. And that's and the big problem that. is that, I, well, let me just say this. The big problem is when the other person is such a big target and we have a little target to work on, we still have to work on our 
target, mm-hmm. but they don't like no matter what. Becky, go ahead. Well, and what I was going to say along the same lines as what Jill's saying is that when we are facing an issue and the help that we reach out to either shuts us down or it's not working for us, that doesn't mean that we're done finding the help that we need. It just means that that wasn't the right help. And so you, and then I want you to think to um, Karen, I want you to think about what does resolution look like? If your resolution in your mind is that we're all going to go back to where we were, you know, everybody was great and we all did everything together, you may be disappointed. Now things will never go back to that. Now it doesn't mean that you can't have reconciliation, but it looks different. The relationships will be different. The trust has been broken and there's a lot of hurt that's going to have to be healed, but that will require outside help like what Joel talked about. And um, we can connect you with somebody. I just, I want to encourage you because so many people will do that. They'll go to somebody, they'll run into a dead end, and then that will be the stop gap. And we, we want you to get where you have peace and security in those relationships and know how to deal with that. What do you think would be a good resource for Karen, either of you? Well, I actually was thinking healing is a choice, Steve. Mm-hmm. That's okay. what I was thinking, too. Oh, All right, good. We're going to send okay. that. We'll send that. And uh, hope and pray that something there uh, is going to help you. There are 10 different choices that uh, many people take those choices and find that one of them or several of them together move them closer to a point of healing. And that's, that's what we want for you. All right. If you need any help, it's 1-800-NEW-LIFE. To join us on this program, it's 1-800-229-3000. Before we go to Ann from Knoxville, I just want to mention that uh, our Club New Life really is an amazing organization of people that are the backbone of everything we do. And we're doing our uh, first uh, Club New Life Zoom, and that's going to be January 16th, and uh, Becky is going to be presenting on change. And um, I don't know if you've noticed, but the world... (laughs) is changing just a little bit. Mm -hmm. And we are so grateful for you Club New Life members, all of you that donated uh, last year. And we have a special offer in January. It's the one-year Life Recovery Prayer Devotional. And we'll send that to you if you join Club New Life or if you uh, give a gift of any amount. And if you join Club New Life, we'll send you, many of you have seen it on the YouTube channel, these amazing uh, devotionals, 100 Days of, of Freedom, 100 Days of Healing, um, 100 Days of Character. I'm going through that in my first 100 days of this year, 100 Days of Character. Uh, they're just really wonderful devotional books. But if you've never been part of Club New Life, how about make this the year you give it a try? I don't think that you'll be disappointed if you come and join the others in Club New Life. Now, let's go to Ann in Knoxville, Tennessee. Sirius XM Satellite Radio comes on at noon, her time on Channel 131. Ann, welcome to New Life Live. How could we help you today? Hi. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. Um, I have a 41-year-old son that hasn't spoken to me since April. Uh, it's not the first time he's done this. Usually there's something that triggers him. He doesn't speak for a couple of months, and then he comes back when there's a crisis, and it's never discussed. It's like it never happened. We're just going to move on like always. This has been the longest time, and it involves, you know, the whole family at this point. He's uh, married for the second time, has three stepdaughters, one away at college now. My grandson, his son, is 16. His mother left when he was two. He has autism spectrum, um, reactive attachment disorder. He's got a pornography problem that he's had since he was like six anger issues, got in a lot of trouble stealing and doing a lot of things that resulted in me having to drive 30 miles every day to pick him up after school until his stepmother got off work because there was no place he could go. And what I think facilitated this is the, the day my son stopped speaking to me, I had picked him up and his counselor was there and she was kind of clueless about some of the things that were going on and I was like, you need the whole story here. And then when we got to my house, he got upset about something, and he reared back his fist to, to swing at me. 
Well, and so okay. when my stepmother got there, I'm like, just go. We'll hear more right after this. We all have struggled with weight problems all our lives. This involves not only the health side of it, but the spiritual side of it. If you're ready to begin a comprehensive plan that provides freedom in every area of your life, New Life's Lose It For Life Online Intensive can help. This online intensive features Zoom sessions presented by Steve Arterburn and Elena al on Saturday, January 27th, plus four small group process sessions facilitated by a credentialed New Life Network counselor. Of all the things, the best part for me was the small group time. If you're finally ready to stop going from diet to diet and begin a comprehensive plan that addresses the psychological, emotional, and spiritual aspects of a healthy lifestyle, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433 or go to newlife.com. It is a life change. It is not a diet. It is not just a plan. It is a life change. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. I have given to New Life regularly because I have so many people that I am referring to New Life who so benefit from the ministry. I just can't imagine what would happen in my area if New Life wasn't available to us. You can help New Life Live stay on the air by joining Club New Life today. When you sign up to support us monthly through Club New Life, we'll send you the new member thank you gift of all eight 100-day devotionals, including 100 days of prayer, 100 days of freedom from depression, and 100 days of peace. There are also ongoing benefits, like the monthly Club New Life CD or download, access to the Club New Life video library, quarterly resources, free shipping on purchased resources, discounts on workshops, and quarterly online meetings with Steve. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Support Club New Life, and together we can help hurting people find help and hope in life's hardest places. Call 1-800-639-5433 to join Club New Life today. We're glad you joined us for New Life Live. To be a part of the program, call 1-800-229-3000. Now back to New Life Live. We are back. So, Ann, as you think about this, what are you hoping we could tell you to do or suggest or remedy for you? Okay, so um, they've found a facility to place my grandson in for treatment. I don't know where it is. Okay. I don't know whether I should try to locate him. I thought about trying it. I think I know where he might be. Uh, But then I feel like if I do that, you know, that's going to put even more distance with me and my son. But in the meantime, my grandson is gone from me. The three step-granddaughters are gone. Two younger children that are cousins, you know, the whole extended family is just gone. I don't know whether to just call it quits and move on with my life or try to find my grandson. Uh, I'm not really sure what the next step is. Okay, well, uh, let's hear from uh, Becky first and then Jill. What do you think? So is it her job to track him down? I think it's really sad, and that this has all gone on. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're saying that this happened back in April, and you haven't had any conversation with him since then, right? Right. Uh, It happened in April, and uh, the additional issue is that he's got about $10,000 on four of my credit cards. He continued making the payments by sending cash to me through his wife until August, and now he has stopped that. And okay. if I mention it to her, she's like, it's between you and him. So he's pulled right. her back away from me as well as everybody else. All right, so Ann, when, and you haven't talked to him, you have not communicated with him at all since then? I've, I've texted him, I've left messages, he doesn't respond. Uh, okay, well. Early on so- when I would text him things, he would respond through his wife, she would contact me. Mm-hmm. But now okay. I, I get nothing from him and very little from her. All right. So you're in a serious situation. I wouldn't say to quit. You haven't done everything possible yet. Um, I would say that he is overwhelmed. If he's that much in debt, if his son is mm-hmm. in treatment, if you know he's had all of this disruption, and yes, you were helpful and you were you know part of the process. But I think people get into places where they're just overwhelmed. They don't even know what to do. And I would, um, if you haven't already talked to um, a professional, you've got some debt with him there. You know, you can have, this sounds threatening, but it's like somebody's got to have a conversation. 
and, and even saying to him, do you want me to quit being in your life? Or like, how are we going to resolve this? And I don't know if, are you still married to his dad or where is dad in the picture? No, his, his, his dad left when they were young. Uh, dad was on wife number seven when he died. Uh, so mm -hmm. I pretty much raised him and his brother uh, by myself. And uh, okay. his dad has since passed away as well. And has his brother been in touch with him? Like, is there any connection between you and his brother and him? Not much. I'm pretty close to the other one, and uh, they don't they don't really speak. That mm -hmm. there was a quite right. a divide between them as children due to their dad and my mother. So they've never ways, really been close. And and there are ways for you to stay connected with the kids, even if the adults aren't part of the conversation. In the meantime, there. But I do think that you're going to have to have a third party get some clarity about. What is the expectation of repayment of debt? What is the expectation of reconnection with the family? But I don't think it's time to quit yet. Well, you, you never quit or give up. But and sometimes we have to face what we are able to do. Um, him pulling away after your grandson tried to assault you, um, I agree with Becky that there's probably a lot of overwhelm and upset and, and maybe some upset that, that things were told that they weren't ready to speak out loud. Um, and so I, I think you trying to track down the grandson, he's under age. So I, I don't know that that's the wisest route to go. I'm, right. I'm wondering about your other grandkids and if you are able to have any texting or contact with them. And I would continue to periodically reach out to both son and wife, and maybe you just text them together, right? And, and so there's accountability for what is said. Um, and just continue to invite him into relationship that you want to hear his hurt and upset. Um, at you if you are part of that or you want to be able to come alongside him um, if life has become so overwhelming. Yes, and okay. here's here's a thought I want to throw into the mix and um, anyone, uh, it's okay to argue this point, <laughs> but I'm wondering this debt, if he can't pay the debt, you're probably not going to have any kind of reconciliation with him or he's not going to want to have contact with you knowing that he owes you the money and he's not paying you the money. Mm -hmm. And he probably yeah. just can't be that person that says, I can't do it. He just quit. So I had some advice a long time ago that you never, ever loan your kids money. <laughs> You, you give them a gift and hope that one day they might decide to pay it back and probably won't. But that this debt thing can really stand in the way. And so someone might say, well, if you, if you tell him I for, you don't owe me that money anymore, that's kind of enabling and not healthy. On the other hand, we don't have all the time in the world here. Right. Mm -hmm. And you might want to tell him you don't expect to be paid back, that it's a gift from you. And see okay. if that produces anything. It might not. But then again, in six months, um, him he may have a little breakthrough there and that's not hanging over his head. What do you think about that? kind of approach would that be something you'd consider or not uh, yeah yeah because i mean people are like oh what are you going to do i'm like i'm going to pay the credit cards it's just money i'll make yeah. more you know but yeah you know i heard what you said to someone else earlier the, the earlier caller about was her son-in-law feeling emasculated by the help mm -hmm. and uh, they lived in my house they rented my house for me for three years um before they purchased it and they purchased it a year ago and the way we got through the purchase was the mortgage company uh, took it at full value, which was three times what I paid for it and not at all what I wanted to sell it to him for. But they did it so that they could reduce the price, and it was a gift of equity as his down payment. Yeah. So since that was all part of the loan, 
and way more than I expected to get, when the house closed, we sat down together and looked at his car loan and her bills and his bills, and I took about $30,000 of that money and cleared everything except these four credit cards, which at the mm. time were pay in and these installments interest free and it was he was like well we're using their money let's let's keep making those payments and not you know mm, yeah. that's what we did so i'm just wondering after that whole thing to now excuse another ten thousand mm. dollars is that uh-huh. also going to make him feel worse no right. i think but, i love the idea steve though because you're what you're because unlike what i said where you're talking about the debt it's like the father of the prodigal son. You yeah. and your intention is to be connected with him and to set the record straight as far as the debt goes allows you the opportunity whether he feels emas- he probably feels emasculated now because he owes you money. Right. And so you're just clearing it. You're like, look, that's that's in the past. Let's start from here. But but I wonder if you might start with the conversation asking him that that you're wondering if the debt is possibly getting in the way of him being able to connect with you. If there's an upset around the debt or feelings of shame or fear of not being able to pay it back, right? And that this, you know, helping them, in no way did you want to put him in a position where he felt trapped or unable to move forward in your relationship. So let's have another conversation about how we might deal with that differently. Yeah. So instead well, of just you know, texting we, him that you've that... forgiven him, right? The right. money. Like use it to spark conversation. You know, I okay, know so, that um, go ahead. he's gotten a, a raise and he's doing really well. Hmm. When he quit talking to me, it was over the grandson. It was several months later that he just stopped paying the bills. Right. So I don't. I don't know what whether. Yeah. The, I don't know what his problem is with not talking to me. Is it the bills? Is it the grandson? Is it uh, right? You know, You're I confused. Got the house now I don't need you. Yeah. I don't know. Right. Well, I'll tell you, it is kind of an epidemic mm-hmm. of these adult children just all of a sudden they don't want to talk to parents anymore. Yeah. It's like we're not giving them the right kind of skills no, to repair things. No, we're not things. teaching about legacy, yeah. right, and generations. And I'll, yeah. I'll send Anne um, doing life with your Jim's adult mm-hmm. children, Jim's book, and hope that will be mm-hmm. helpful to her. I hope and pray that if you have adult children, that before you spend time with them, they come over, you go there, that you really think about how fragile some of these relationships are because you want to keep it going. For most of my life, I've been dealing with an opiate addiction. Why is opioid addiction quickly becoming one of our nation's biggest killers? Maybe it's because it isn't only those who are addicted who are in denial. We did what I see so many parents do, is it can't be an addiction. There's something medically wrong. It's impossible to solve a problem when you don't know what you're up against. And families will try to find any explanation except the one that will put them on the right path. Alcoholism and drug addiction is a family disease. It doesn't affect just the individual. If someone you love is abusing painkillers, know what you're up against. It's time to admit it's addiction and seek treatment. Call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. We have partner treatment centers around the country. Call 1-800-639-5433 or visit us online at newlife.com. We just made a decision. We will do whatever it takes. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Hi, this is Steve Arterburn, and for over 34 years, New Life has been the most trusted name in Christian counseling. Your ministry has saved my life. If you struggle with emotional hurt, family, or marriage problems, the pit of depression, or the pain of addictions, we can help. I'm down 100 pounds now from what I was. Our treatment programs provide clinically appropriate solutions from licensed professionals, all in a biblical framework. I have had problems with alcohol. I think God has ordained this place to be His. You don't have to be a prisoner of your pain. Help is available at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. She tells me that I'm a new man and I feel like a new man. It worked for me and it can work for them too. This time it is different. If you're ready to take the first step towards genuine spiritual and emotional healing, call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. 
God can open the door to a better tomorrow, call 1-800-639-5433. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. We're back and I just want to take some time to talk about how do you stay connected to these adult children? What's your best hope? Because it is kind of epidemic that parents are being cut off from grandchildren or just like this. Somebody just decides not going to pay you back, not going to talk to you, don't want you around. Well, and and, and some of it, Steve, can I just interject that yes. um, there is, I think, the greater culture of cutting things out that we don't like or agree with, right? Yeah. So there's less so tolerance true. in that way. And so people are living in more of a split world where yeah. we make things all good or all bad and under the guise of I'm setting boundaries and I'm protecting myself. Instead of learning how do we stay in relationship? How do we work through conflict and difficulties? How do we say no to a parent without cutting them out? Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I yeah, we've, we've, we've become a culture where it is the other's responsibility mm-hmm. for our feelings. Yes. As yeah. opposed to dealing with and doing something with the feelings, being vulnerable, um, having honest conversations, mm-hmm. not in reaction, but in, you know, I want to understand more. But, yeah. you know, in the parenting challenge is you need to be done parenting. That's what, you know, we've talked about that a lot where it's like you're yeah. not parenting a 41-year-old. You you become an adult in relationship. Yes, you're the parent. You give right. birth to them, mm-hmm. but it's not the same relationship. Not the same. Very good. Okay, I just want to say this. Don't do something that the kids tell you not to do. Don't, (laughs) don't, you know, if you've got the grandkids over at your house, don't do things. Give them things that they've asked you not to do. And then comply with some of their wishes. Don't be controlled by your adult kids. Um, All of this, you can find wisdom in Jim Burns' book, Doing Life with Our Adult Children. We'll go to our final caller from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, also a listener on Sirius XM, Satellite Radio Channel 131 at 1 p.m. Eastern, and this is Yvonne. Hi, Yvonne. Welcome, and um, we don't have much time, but I wanted to get to your call. How could we help? Well, my question is, uh, I'm in the Word a lot, and I am a Christian, and uh, my question is, I'm kind of not understanding man's free will that God has given to man. I have been having serious abuse issues from some neighbors behind me. Really? Very, uh, they're very uh, fam- uh, famous or well-known in the area, and the police, they look the other way. And in the beginning, there was a lot of calls and reports to, against me, and then I would call the, when they did things, and that didn't work. So I started praying for their salvation to... There doesn't seem to be any changes in them. They've tried to have me arrested because I put Jesus' name on my property. A uh, terroristic tr- uh, threat they put against me for having his name there and mm-hmm. charged me with false charges and fines. And I pray for their salvation. And as a Christian and as um, a widow, I'm not understanding the free will that man is given. Is it to a point where God just moves back and takes his hand off of it? I've cried out to the Lord to deliver me from it. It has affected me. Uh, okay, let me ask now. you a question real quick. Yes. Um, what, what is, how did you display Jesus on your property that is so upsetting to them? Well, he tore down all my property pens. No, but they what is, my, you know, what, and I what is it that they're saying? You say, ribbon. hold on, hold on. You okay. say they live behind you. Yes. Um, Ohio, what did yes. what did you do in displaying the name of Jesus? What was that form did that take that they don't like? I put a little. The man put who surveyed it put pink ribbons around it, and I put Jesus' name on each four corners of my property. It's as big uh-huh. as my pinky finger. Uh, they filed charges. They sent a private uh, okay. sergeant down in a black car. He said he had two charges, one to file charges that I was filing the name of Jesus Christ. They wanted to remove the second charge. They charged me $12,000 fine. He proclaimed I broke his pens down, and it's all lies. Okay, so let me let me say this, Yvonne. I would do, given that you've got law enforcement 
working against you for whatever reason. Yeah. I would I would not do the things that are causing conflict. Okay. Because you don't have to. And your life is much, much more important, the way you live, than the name of Jesus on four posts. That's the first thing. The, the second thing is God does give us free will. And so he's not going to impose his free will on those people. Okay. He's not going to he's not going to step in and for your sake make them choose to be good. Because that's not free will. And okay. sometimes the free will of other people is used to hurt us. And it is tragic. Yeah. You know, the free will of one person gets drunk, drives fast and kills someone we love in a car wreck it would be so great if that weren't the way it was but all of us have to experience those consequences because God wants us to choose him not be forced to choose him Jill uh, or Becky any thoughts on this for her well I think sometimes we need to um be Jesus-like in our demeanor and our behavior. I love that you're praying for them when they've been so angry and hostile towards you. Um, and we don't have to, I, I mean, I agree, like you want to be neighborly. So yes. what's going to be neighborly, right? We're going to be sensitive to other people's limitations or offenses, right? Yeah. And so you're not going to go out of your way to provoke them. Um, even if you feel justified and, and have a right to, right? You want to preserve relationship. And people are one through relationship, right? Okay. Yeah. Not by you, you know, putting up signs saying Jesus, right? I like to intercede just for a second. I did. They did tear everything down, and I never yeah. bothered in a few years. I have not put that okay. back up again. Okay. I left it alone. I mean, I love your heart, but at the same yeah. time... Um, that's that's not the way that's going to work in their hearts, right? And I would just ask the Lord to guide your steps and your actions and your words, right, in how to be a better neighbor. Well, Becky, you I have just, a thought? I but, wanted, yeah. yeah, I just wonder, Yvonne, are you safe where you are? Do you feel like you're safe? Because mm -hmm. if you feel like the police are not representing you well, yeah. that's a whole different thing. And you know, it can be very, just very disconcerting, very disruptive mm -hmm. in our lives when we don't feel safe at home. And so I don't know if you have a community of friends or family that have spoken to you about this or if you, you know, talk to them about it, but I would evaluate, is this the place for me to stay? Not because you're running away, but it's literally, you know, if they're coming at, at you with that kind of vengeance over something like that, that's really, um, that's really, it's just troublesome, and I would want you to be safe. Okay. All right, uh, let me um, let me send you a copy of the um, One Year Bible for Women. My wife did that. I hope that that will be a blessing to you. I'm really sorry um, for all that's going on there, so, and being a widow, and it just feels mm -hmm. so helpless. Um, I want to close with a scripture. It's right out of James 1, 18. It's, it says, Of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we should be the a kind of first fruits of his creatures. We are the first fruits of all the creatures that God created. We're the best. He did. Now let's go live like that. Let's love like that. I don't know of any, any reason to be mean to somebody today. I know a lot of reasons to love them. Thank you, Becky. Thank you, Jill. Thanks to all of you who listen, watch, pray, and support us. 1-800-NEW-LIFE if you need help or can help us. Thanks you for time. listening. We hope this program has helped you by giving you insights for handling the challenges you face in your life. We want you to know that we're here for you, but you also need to know that New Life Live is a listener-supported ministry. To make your donation or to get any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. 
That's 1-800-639-5433 or write to us at New Life Ministries, P.O. Box 1029, Lake Forest, California, 92609. Please join us again tomorrow for New Life Live. Thanks for watching today. We love helping people. I hope you sense that. And we know that there's always hope if you find the right resource. Now, if something we've said that somebody else applies to you, that's fantastic. That's what we're hoping for. But also, if you want to join us directly, you can call 1-800-229-3000 between 1 and 3 Eastern Time, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Those are the best times to get through. And while you're here on YouTube, Check out these other videos that we've done to help people see where they could grow or a different path to take. And if you do that, would you give us a thumbs up on the video and please subscribe to this channel. There are many ways that we can help you outside of the radio program, and it's very hard for some to pick up a phone and dial 1-800-NEW-LIFE, but when you do, we put you in touch with somebody who cares about you, knows all the resources out there, and they're going to find the best for you. There is no reason to struggle alone. I hope to see you tomorrow. Hope you'll invite somebody else to come and join that maybe needs just a little bit of help along the way. I'll see you next time.